Hello, my sweet artist friends. It is so nice to see you. This week I'm here at my home. I hope you like this backdrop as well. And we are going to be making these gorgeous fall landscapes together. Now, I have here my blank sheet of paper. Last week, we learned all about color mixing and how to create some great colors by using just red, yellow, and blue. Those are called our primary colors. So say it with me, primary colors. We've done our primary colors and we've mixed them together to make every single color in the rainbow. Can you see that? Now that's pretty amazing. Art is such a magical thing. Now this week, I want us to use everything that we've learned so far this year in art. We've learned about lines, how we have a line that goes across from one side to the other side, which is called a horizontal line. We've learned about a line that goes straight up and down, which is called a vertical line. And we've learned about a line that goes from one corner way up and slashes right across to the other corner. And that is called a diagonal line. So we know about the directions that lines go in and we know that lines can curve, they can curl, lines can go whoop, 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 and zigzag and do all sorts of fun things. They can be thick, they can be thin, and the lines that we use affect the way that our art looks. So be very mindful of what kind of lines that you use in your beautiful artwork. Now we've also learned all about shapes and forms and how different shapes can be used and put together to create forms, like how we did when we drew our crystals together. We use shapes like triangles and rhombuses and trapezoids and hexagons and pentagons and all kinds of different shapes and we combine them with vertical horizontal and diagonal lines in order to create crystals now that we know how to draw our shapes and our lines and our colors we can use all of that information to create something brand new so what we are going to do today is focus on the season that we are in. We are now in the season called autumn, also known as fall. And for the autumnal season, we are going to create a wonderful landscape together. Oh, I have a request from my boyfriend who lives here with me. He needs something that is right here. This is a lot of fun. You use it to get lint off of your clothes, so I'm handing it to him now. Thank you for guest starring from afar in our lesson this week. So now we are going to get started on drawing our landscapes together. Now, my friends, some of you have already seen the lesson posted on the channel called autumn landscapes in our team together. So if you have not yet seen that, I want you to pause this video, go ahead and pause this video and go and watch the videos that I have posted there and read the blog post that I posted telling you all about what we are going to be doing. Now my very own drawing is going to be based off of the drawing from Claude Monet and it is a beautiful painting about haystacks in autumn. Now, there is a video on that blog post that's about six minutes long, and it is all about Claude Monet and his art, and I would love for you to go ahead and watch that video. So pause this, go to your team, and go to the channel that has the words autumn landscape in it, and read the post, and read the lesson and watch that video. So if you haven't paused yet to do that, go ahead and pause now. Did you pause? Did you read the lesson and watch that video? If you did, then I'm sure you've unpaused by now and welcome back. So here, what we're gonna be doing is actually drawing and painting together. Now I have some of my favorite paints to use, which are watercolor paints in this little, small palette. It's called a traveling watercolor palette. You can have it in your pocket. 
It's a little hard to open. And when I open it, it's a mess. All my colors are everywhere, but that's okay because I can just organize them and put them back where they go. See, I use this palette. I put it in my purse and I take it with me. And there are lots of different colors here. Now, watercolors are very interesting and my favorite kinds of paint because they're not very messy at all. And you can use these solid little blocks of color here and add water to them to create some really amazing, bright and vivid colors. Now, when I do my watercolor painting, you use this part here as your palette. So you can see I already have some colors on here. I mixed some colors up, like over here I've got some green, I have some different oranges that I've mixed together, and I have this really bright pink color that I use as a red to mix all of my other colors up because as you know, you can mix just about any color you need with the colors red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors. So that's what I'm gonna use today. I can use my little cup here of water and my brush. Let me take this little plastic part off so that I can use this little watercolor brush. Ah, the plastic is so stuck. Okay, I got it. So I'm gonna use my little watercolor brush here. And behind me, I have the picture of the painting by Claude Monet. I'm also going to use my colors here in my pencil box to sketch out and draw on my piece of paper the general lines and shapes that I am going to be coloring in. So to make this landscape, I'm looking right at the picture that I have posted on your team. I see that we have a horizon line back here. We have a haystack that looks like a triangle shape. Oh, it actually, it looks like a cone because this line is curved. So we're gonna draw a cone form and underneath it, there are two vertical lines and another curved shape to make this haystack. There is a smaller haystack next to it. I'm gonna draw that out here as well using my curved lines and my cone shape or my cone form to create the basic layout of this drawing. Now in the background, I see lots of different horizontal lines and blocks of color. So I'm going to separate those here. There's some grass. It looks like there's some dirt back here. Grass and dirt. And then there are some shadows on the ground from the haystacks. So now I have a nice sketch of what I am going to paint. Maybe I'm going to look at it and correct my sketch a little so everything's on the same lines. And I like the way it looks. Oh, and very important, let's not forget to write your name on your gorgeous artwork. Now I'm going to write my name way up at the top in really small letters. I'm going to write Miss Alafia. I'm also going to label this. I'm going to write Monet Haystack. practice. Because when we're looking at another artist's work and trying to create something like that artist's work, it's important that we make sure that everyone knows that it is based on that artist's work. Because it's not an idea that came straight from my head to draw these haystacks. I wanted to draw them because Monet made them so beautiful. And so I'm going to study them and practice them until I understand what I really like about his beautiful landscapes. So I wanted to add my own special touches here. And because it's fall, I thought about adding some pumpkins in. So I'm gonna draw in my pumpkins that I want to paint. Maybe there are some small pumpkins and some big pumpkins together. And I'm gonna make them shaped however I want my pumpkins to look because it's my own artwork and you can have your shape however you want your pumpkins to look. And when you draw a pumpkin, just think about the shape that they have. They have a round shape. They have a stalk on the top, which is 
what is connected to the other pumpkins. They also have leaves. So I'm gonna draw in my leaves and my nice curving line that makes more pumpkins. Adding my pumpkins to Monet's haystacks. I might also add some trees in the distance so I can put some fall leaves on the ground. See how I'm making this my own? You can do the same thing. Whatever you want to put, even if you want to put something like a cake in, it's your artwork, so I can't tell you not to do that. You can do whatever you want in your own artwork. As long as it's a beautiful landscape, which means it looks like an outside scene, and you have your fall themed things in it. You don't even have to draw it like the haystacks in Monet. You can draw your very own landscape. So now that I have my drawing sketched out, I am going to start mixing my colors. So here's my drawing and I'm gonna put it down into the side while I decide what colors I think will be good for fall, for the fall season. Watercolor is very fun for me to do because when I'm watercoloring, you can just dip your brush into your water and you can even use your water to clean your whole palette off. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna take my water and use it all over my palette, except I wanna keep some of that pink color. I think that's a nice one to blend with. And I'm gonna clean that all off. And then I have here, close to me, a piece of cloth. You could also use a paper towel or something. And everything that was just wet is gonna come off very easy. So I can go ahead and clean my palette and reorganize my colors and have them where I want them to be whenever I want. That way, I don't blend my colors in the pan with the rest of the colors, and then these colors stay nice and pure. So because this is going to be a fall scene, I need colors that remind me of the season, warm colors, like the colors yellow, orange, red, red-orange, and yellow-orange. I might even want to use some red-violet, maybe a little violet. So basically, this side of the color wheel here is going to give me the kinds of colors that I want to use for my fall season. And if I want to put shadows in, I think I can use violet and red violet and even blue violet to create some nice shadows and some depth for my artwork. So let's start by using our yellow color. I'm gonna get a whole bunch of yellow on my brush with some water and I'm gonna place that here on my palette. See? Now this is gonna reactivate every time I get it wet. So here's my yellow and I can use that for blending. Now I can also go in with my pink reddish color here and get a whole bunch of that ready. And I'm gonna blend up some nice orange over here. Now this pink color is called magenta and it's actually a really great substitute for red when you're making art. So if you have a nice pink magenta color and you wanna use that instead of your red when blending colors, it's a good substitute for the primary color, red. And I'm mixing that together, and now I get some beautiful orangey colors to go with my already nice yellow and magenta. I'm going to even use some of my orange that I already have here. And I'm going to blend that orange with a little magenta, too, to make a nice red-orange color. So here I have some colors, and I'm gonna start putting those colors in on my gorgeous composition. Now you don't have to paint if you don't have any paints, that's okay, but sometimes it's nice to watch people paint even if you're not painting. So let me go ahead and start with my red-orange color. I'm gonna paint in the shadows of my pumpkins. Pumpkins are 3D, so they're forms, right? 
even though the shape of them is generally kind of like an oval. See how I'm aware of the shapes I'm using? You're going to use like an oval shape, and then you're going to add in curved lines to give it some dimension. So it looks 3D, and then you add your shadows to help it stay 3D like a nice form. That's how you can turn a shape into a form, just by adding shadows. I'm even going to add some shadows on the ground below the pumpkins with my watercolor. Are you guys having fun watching me paint and painting along with me? I hope so. You can also draw along with me. I like to use lots of different items and kinds of drawing and painting things in all my artwork. So sometimes I use paint, but sometimes I use crayons and colored pencils together too. Sometimes I use markers. I like to draw and use all kinds of stuff. I even like to use fabric dye and dye my fabric and create art out of fabric, like quilts and clothing. And that's kind of what I like to do. So now I'm going into some of my orange that I created earlier and I'm gonna put a nice orange wash all over my pumpkins. The thing that I like about watercolor so much is that you can build on top of what you already put down and create these really nice transparent layers. You can build it up so that it looks solid later, but you can still kind of see through the color. I think that this, even though it's not what Claude Monet used, is going to be a nice medium to kind of get what Claude Monet tried to get in his artwork as well. But I'm putting my own personal twist on it by adding my own colors and my own pumpkins and creating my artwork how I want it to look. And once this is finished, I'm going to upload it to all of the teams so that you guys all have a chance to see it as well. I've been painting for a long time with watercolors since I was little. And I even went to college and took a class on how to use watercolors there. So if you guys are confused and you think I could never do that, remember that that's not true. You can do it too. You just have to practice and want to. And it takes a lot of time to develop new skills. So if you find yourself not sure why it's not working out, don't give up. It's always a good idea to keep trying, to keep going. And if you really are stuck, you can ask for help. And I'm always here for help. If you need me, you can post a message on Student Space, or you can post it on the channel, and I will get back to you as soon as I can and I'll give you whatever advice I think that you need. Or I'll tell you that, hey, it's just perfect as it is. You can't expect it to look like Claude Monet. Now he's been painting for a long time as well. All his life he was a painter and an artist like you learned in the video that we watched together. And so if it takes you some time to be able to make art that you think is beautiful, that's okay. I'm very proud of you for even trying and practicing because that's what's important right now. Art teaches us a lot of really wonderful things about ourselves. Like if we have the strength to persevere when we don't know if it's going to turn out right, if we can find ways to fix our mistakes or incorporate our mistakes into our work and move on without letting it get us sad. It teaches us how to process our emotions. It helps us in a lot of ways just enjoy what we have. And it's so nice to spend time just painting and drawing together. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm glad I can spend this time with you guys even though I can't go live anymore the way that I used to. I'm glad that I can still spend time with you guys teaching you art like this. 
I hope you're glad about that too. So there's still a lot of time left in our class, but if you want, you can pause. You don't have to watch anymore. All I'm gonna be doing is painting the rest of this picture along with you. And if you'd like to watch that and you enjoy watching it and you think you can learn something from the way I use my watercolor technique, then please do. And remember, you can always come back to these videos at any time. But now it's time for you to try yourself. You saw how I broke down the landscape into shapes and forms. And now I'm drawing what's in the foreground first. That's the stuff that's in front of all the other stuff. So I'm gonna draw my pumpkins first and paint them in. And then I can always go back and add more to them later if I want to. Like there's some more orange I could put in over here. So it looks more pumpkin-y. And then I'm gonna use my other colors, like I was looking at the red violet and the blue violet over here. So I'm gonna mix some blue in with my red. And then I'm gonna add some extra red orangey color because that's how I make a nice red violet you see it up here at the top that's a red violet color that I just mixed up together so I'm gonna take that red violet now and I'm gonna use it for the shadows again on my pumpkins to make some more shadowy depth Doesn't that just make it pop out and look like it's a whole 3d item like a pumpkin in a field at sunset in the autumn. That's exactly what I want it to look like. So that's why I chose those warm colors that I'm choosing. And to make a shadow on a warm color, it's nice to blend it with a cool color like blue. Add more orange in. Oh, I have that nice orangey red violet. So far, my pumpkins are looking pretty good. Are yours looking good too? I bet you they're looking fantastic. Or instead of pumpkins, maybe you're doing some fall leaves. Like I started over here. I think those are probably looking fantastic too but I don't have to think about it and wonder because you guys are gonna show me very soon what your artwork looks like. So I can't wait to see it. Maybe I should put in some nice red for my pretty pumpkins as well as my fall leaves and some nice bright orange too. Now with watercolors, the less water you add, the more vibrant and bright the color is going to be. It's gonna be more intense. However, the more water you use, so if I dip into water a lot, you're gonna get these really light washes of color that look like that. So you can decide based on how much water you put on your brush, how intense your color is going to be. That's another thing that I like about watercolors a lot, is that you can make lots of decisions and control what your artwork is going to look like very easily. And it's so clean, it doesn't make a big mess. That's another thing I really like about watercolor painting. Have you ever painted with paints like this? And when you use them, you just have a huge mess left over and then you have to clean up and it's so much more work than it would have been if you had just painted something cleaner. Yeah, I've done that before. I make big messes when I use acrylic or tempera or oil paints, but that's okay. Art sometimes is messy. But when I don't feel like being messy and I still feel like doing some painting, watercolor is my perfect solution. You can also do this with colored pencils. You can add in your colored pencils even on top of your watercolor. So here I have a red colored pencil and I'm just gonna use it 
on top of my watercolor to really define some areas and to draw inside and give things a nice look to them. I like to use all kinds of mediums of art together. See how the colors I use, those oranges and reds, make these pumpkins look like they're in the twilight and they're just outside enjoying a beautiful fall day. There are some leaves falling behind. I can draw. Maybe once this is nice and dry, I can draw with the colored pencils some of the details in the leaves and outline them with thick lines so that they show up really nicely. You can tell what they are. Leaves falling from the tree. Now let's see what Claude Monet used as his background color. I have to log back in because I've been painting now for so long. Okay, yes, he used some pretty colors like purples and some yellow greens in the background. That's nice. Why don't we mix up a yellow green together? So to make a yellow green, you are going to first mix up your green, right? So green is made with yellow, color yellow. I'm putting lots of yellow here to mix up our nice yellow green and blue. So go ahead and grab some of your blue color and mix that up into your yellow. Look at that, a nice green that I made just with red and yellow. Now I'm going to add more yellow to our yellow green color in order to get that beautiful light grassy yellow green. Maybe even some more yellow. Before I go in to mix my, my color in with my pure color down here, I like to wet my brush first so that too much green doesn't come off into my yellow. And I can just use it, grab some yellow, and do my mixing on my palette. There we go. That's a nice yellow green color. It changed so fast, didn't it? Every time I mix colors, I think it's just like magic. So now I'm gonna go in in this background. It looks like there's some light falling here and put in my yellow green right here where I drew that difference, those lines. I drew horizontal lines across to help me know where to put certain colors in the background. Now that I know where to put them, I can use my yellow green and put my background in just like how Claude Monet did. It looks like right after the yellow green, he used some red and red orange and some beautiful red violet in order to make like a shadowy area of where the dirt was. So I'm gonna keep putting in my yellow green and then I'm gonna look at the artwork and the landscape that I'm drawing and think of what colors it has. And now I can mix my own colors and make them however I want, whatever I see. And what I see is going to be a little bit different from what you see. So even if we're gonna make the same exact painting, it's gonna be different. How exciting is that? No two people can make the same exact thing unless, you know, they study for years and years and years exactly just how to make it look exactly the same. But most people don't really do that because, well, what's the point? If you can make something that no one else can make, why would you make something that someone else already made? It's nice to study the artists and see how they came up with doing what they did. But all in all, this is my own painting. It's based on Claude Monet's, but it's Miss Alafia's painting after all. And yours will be yours. There we go, I'm adding in that yellow green. This is probably gonna take me longer than just our 40 minute class period to finish because I'm painting it instead of using colored pencils and other kinds of drawing supplies, but that's okay. When I do have it finished, 
I will post the picture for you guys in this channel, and that way you'll be able to see it. I'm going to add some blue-green up here at the top to show that there are those shadows. Now, the Impressionists like Claude Monet, they used oil paints and they used different directions of small lines to create the effects and blend those colors to the eye instead of blending them on the paper very much or on the palette. They blended right on the paper, but that's not the way that I like to paint. I'd have to practice that method a lot more to get it like that. So I'm trying to use similar brush strokes, but overall, I'm blending my colors together on the page so that they look smooth and nice, just because that's what I like to see and how I know how to paint. There it is so far. I'm going to add some more darker green to my blue-green. And I'm going to paint my pumpkin's vines and leaves. And I can come back in later with darker colors. Remember, more water makes it easier to do long pieces like this. Less water would be good for adding in small details later when you're working with watercolor. Painting is a great way to practice mixing and blending colors to get exactly what you want. But you can mix colors and blend colors with crayons. You can do it with colored pencils, markers, any kind of drawing supplies at all, really, you can blend your colors with. Any kind of paint, too, not just watercolor paint. And when you blend your own colors, you make something even more personal to you because the amount of color that you use to blend it is going to affect what colors you have, and everyone's blends are going to look quite different. And that's really cool. So that's what it looks like so far. Now, for the last few minutes of class today, I'm also going to add in some of those haystacks. Let's see what colors Claude Monet used. He used oranges, purples, violets. I see them now. And then the actual hay colors, hmm, it looks like he used very light browns and some darker browns and blended them. Now I'm gonna come in here and mark the way that the shadows look, because I have a shadow coming down this way on the cone and this way. Same over here, I have a shadow that looks like this, and it's brighter on that side. So now I've marked where my shadows are gonna go, and I'm gonna go in and blend up my nice orangey violet color again, because that's kind of what it looks like, is a red violet that uses a lot of orange. And as you get more used to observing colors and identifying colors and mixing colors, you too will be able to look at something and tell me if it has more orange violet, red violet, blue violet, and colors like that inside, and how to mix them up. It just takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of thinking like an artist, using those elements of art and principles of design to really understand and think the way that artists think. We use all of those tools in our artist toolkits. So now it's time for me to put my shadows on. I'm gonna start like this. This part looks very shadowy to me. There's a darker value, and we'll talk about value soon. But there's darker values right over here. And then it gets lighter. So let me take 
my water and blend out a little bit of that color. Move that color around. Now this whole side is a little bit more shadowy and darker than this side. So I'm only going to use that violet color that I blended up on this side. And the other side looks like it's very bright orange. So let me mix up my yellow and my red and make a nice vibrant orange. And I'm gonna use that color right here. I want it to have the texture, which we'll talk about texture too, of hay. So I'm gonna do what Claude Monet did and use brush strokes that give this the texture of hay. on this side. Now I see lots of yellows added in too, so I'm gonna add in just some straight up yellow. Yeah, that's looking nice. What do you think? Do you think it's looking okay? I think on the top here, he used lots more yellow and more gold, goldy looking, pretty yellow, which would be some yellow and some orange, I think blend and make the appearance of golden sunshine at golden hour in that haystack. Yep. So far, I really like what I've created. And it's been relaxing and fun to draw and paint and teach you all how to create something like this. See how I have my different colors blended on the page where you can see some yellows, some oranges, and purples. Now on top of that shadow that I painted earlier, I'm gonna add this orange as well because I think that those colors are still in that haystack. They're just covered with that violet shadow. This is gonna make it look a little bit more realistic, like there's a shadow coming over it instead of like there's just purple on that side. And I'll do the same thing up at the top. There's some shadowy areas in here I think in order to make them look a little bit more brown, remember brown is when you mix all three primary colors together. So there's already some blue, and there's already some yellow and some red in this, but because it's purple, see this is when the color wheel really comes in handy. Because it's purple, I know the opposite of purple is yellow because it's across from itself on the color wheel. So I can go in with my yellow and make it look even more brown and golden all at the same time. And then I have one of my haystacks. Add just a little more of my shadow here while the page is wet to help it disperse itself a little bit more. And there you go. It's still a work in progress, but there are my haystacks in my fall landscape with my pumpkins so far. I hope you all enjoyed class today and I will see you guys very soon. Have a wonderful, beautiful day, my sweet and wonderful artists. You guys are so amazing. Make sure that when you're all done, you clean up your area and you put all of your things away. If you used watercolor paints too, Make sure you don't drink your paint water. You've got to pour that down the sink. <laughs> Bye, guys. Much love every single day. And I know each and every one of you are amazing artists. I can't wait to see what you create. Bye-bye. <laughs>